Today I'm going to be reviewing the Surefire XC1. Uh, if you know me and you follow my channel or Instagram or whatever at all, you know that I love my G26. It's my favorite gun. I carry it all the time, everywhere I go. It's reliable. I like how it looks. I like how it feels. It's just... It's my favorite gun. Out of all my guns, my Glock 26 is my favorite gun. Um, but winter's right around the corner, and it's getting dark earlier, and I recently got married, and my wife likes to go on a lot of walks at night, so I'm out in dark environments a lot more, so I figured it was time to uh, up my carry up to my Glock 19, uh, mostly because there's no rail on the G26, and there's no lights that fit this thing that I'm aware of. You can kind of hack some lights to work for it, but... Um, I just decided to bump it up to the Glock 19, at least for the winter, I may go back to the 26 uh, in the summer. But So now I'm carrying this gun, Glock 19, run G19, um, with the Surefire XC1. Now this light uh, got announced, I think last year's shot was the first time it was announced, uh, and people have been waiting for it for a long time. It is an underpowered, overpriced light. Uh, but it's made by Surefire, so you're going to know it's good, it's good quality, it's unique, it's the first of its type, I think, that runs on a AAA. It's super light, super small, uh, and since I appendix carry, I thought, well, this light would finally be a good option for me. It wouldn't be too bulky, it wouldn't be jamming into my thigh, it would just add marginal size to uh, the Glock 19. So some of you know I make holsters and sell them, um, so I've been prototyping this model for the XC1 now for a little bit uh, and it's nice it's it's pretty minimal it has a little more bulk than my regular holsters but still uh, the lines are good and it's pretty comfortable so I'm just gonna go into a review of the light now comparing it against some other lights on the market uh, and just giving kind of my initial thoughts and feedback it hasn't been out for long I haven't had it for very long so um, it's not a full-on big I've had it for a year these are my thoughts review just kind of my initial impressions so yeah, there's not much to it. I'm going to talk a little bit about the manipulation, uh, the momentary, and then the uh, constant on. The size of it, the controls, the beam pattern, the color temperature, how it compares to some other lights that I've used. Uh, I haven't used every light out there, but I do have a fair amount. Um, so yeah, if, if you're thinking about getting this light, if you're interested in this light, this would be a great review to watch. Um, and I'll just try and answer any questions that you guys might have uh, before you ask them. So here we have it on Glock 19. I'm sure you've seen all the pictures of it on Glock 19s also, but uh, it's what I carry, so it's what I'm going to do, do the review on. Uh, you'll see it extends not past the muzzle at all. It's pretty much flush with the front of the slide uh, in the frame here. Uh, in the front, you'll see that the light is on this side, and the battery, AAA battery compartment, is on the, this side. Um, the width of it is about the same as a Glock 19 slide, um, so it's nice it doesn't add any extra bulk to uh, your gun if you're thinking about carrying this IWB. Um, the controls are right here, flush with the front of the trigger guard. Um, the constant on is right here, so you'll have to use your uh, support hand to push that through uh, if you're right-handed. If you're left-handed, I don't know. I guess you got to put your finger up here, reach around underneath and get it. Um, it is not very tall, so your trigger guard will be lower than the light, which you might not think is a big deal, but it kind of is a big deal for appendix carry. So if you make a holster for it, uh, it allows this to be just a little bit smaller than it would on another traditional light. So for me, uh, I know some people carry like X300's appendix, and I don't even understand that. Uh, but a lot of people do it with great success. Uh, I can't, because it protrudes into my leg. So the less area I can have here on my holster, the more comfortable it's going to be for me. So the, the XT1 actually helps a lot there. So that's the overall uh, dimensions uh, of the light uh, as it compares to a Glock 19. And I'll do, I'll, I'll put it on a couple other guns here in a bit, but for now, most of you probably are going to have this on a Glock 19, so I know that's what you really care about. So the light is 200 lumens, 
has a one hour runtime. Uh, I'm guessing that's with a lithium AAA. Uh, I'm guessing with the standard alkaline, you're gonna get even less runtime off of that. So runtime's pretty weak. Uh, lumen count is okay. 200 lumens is all right. I'd always prefer more, um, but 200 is better than something you're gonna get uh, on something like uh, the Viridian C5L, which is uh, another compact weapon light that I've used for a little bit. Uh, I think this is 100 lumens, maybe only 75, uh, I'm not sure. But 200 is good enough for most things. Um, inside the house, short distance, uh, which is probably the only time I'm going to be using my pistol for self-defense um, in close proximity or uh, in my home. So it's kind of nice because previously I had a home defense gun with a light on it. Uh, and my everyday carry gun, uh, which was my G26 without a light on it. So now I can just have one, uh, put the rest of them in a safe or whatever I'm going to do with them. Um, so that, that's a bonus. Your carry gun, if you carry with a light, um, that's just something to think about. And I just hadn't carried a carry gun with a light because the next smallest option that I liked at all was uh, an Inforce, which was a pretty small light, I always thought, in my opinion. Uh, it's quite a bit smaller than the X300, which I'll grab here in a second, but... The Enforce is a giant compared to the XC1, so I never wanted to carry this uh, IWB. So even if you do up to uh, carrying IWB with a weapon mounted light, I still think it's really important to carry a, uh, a handheld light. So I actually upped my handheld from the MicroStream, which is still a great little light uh, and still would meet my needs for almost everything, uh, up to this through night Archer A1V2. Um, so I went with this light because it's still got uh, all the features I'm looking for, but it also had variable output, so it's a little brighter at the brightest than the stream light, uh, and also had different modes. So like I said, we're going on a lot of walks and stuff, and I don't always want uh, full-on 500 lumens or whatever. Uh, sometimes I want 50 or 100 lumens, so having the flexibility there uh, is a nice option. So I would say even if you're going to go for a weapon mounted light, it's still super, super, super important to carry a handheld because you're going to almost always use your handheld. You're not going to want to take your gun out and shine it on stuff uh, unless it's an actual threat. So uh, things to keep in mind, just because you're carrying light on your gun doesn't mean you should quit carrying uh, a flashlight in your pocket. So the mounting for it isn't a quick release. It's a single slotted screw uh, in the front and the mounting options aren't really that flexible. It'll fit probably most of the guns you're looking for, but it won't fit uh, some of the smaller guns. Uh, and at the current stage, it doesn't look like it's modifiable at all to fit any smaller guns. So it's just uh, slotted, and I'll take it off here. So it is a solid system with a little crossbar that goes across, um, and once you unscrew it, that actually drops down, and you can slide it just right on directly, um, and then tighten it up. So that's how that works. Uh, it won't fit on a smaller gun like an XDS. The crossbar doesn't have anything to go into, and you can't tighten it down. Um, some of these other lights kind of work. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend using them, but like the Enforce is just like a clamping mechanism. Uh, and even though it doesn't actually fit on this gun, you can clamp it down uh, and it'll kind of work. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that, but uh, it's an idea. Also work kind of on like an M&P compact, but again, the XC1 will not fit onto that gun. Uh, here's how it looks on a, an M&P 4.25, uh, obviously not a real gun here, but it will give you a little bit of an idea on how far that extends past that uh, and the sizes on it. So here is an Inforce uh, on a Glock 17, you can see how far that extends, uh, and an Inforce is just past flush on a G17, um, it's quite a bit past flush. Uh, on a Glock 19. So my older kind of go-to light, I know some people have issues with these things falling off and stuff, but I'm honestly not that hard use of a guy. So they've been fine for me, but I'll still probably keep it on my 17, uh, and I'll grab an X300 here and drop it on a 17 as well to see you uh, how much bigger that is than the X, than the uh, <laughs> Inforce APL. Also, we have uh, this option, which is a Viridian C5L. It has a lot more functions, has a light uh, and a laser, green laser, uh, with a lot of modes. 
So it's kind of a cool little light, but I just, I've had reliability issues with mine. Um, but I'll drop it on a Glock 19 here and show you it for size comparison. It is actually a little shorter. Uh, it's taller and a little thicker than the XC1. So things to consider. It's a pretty pricey light too, but I've just had some reliability issues with it. Um, I don't like the controls as much, so I just haven't really used it. Um, but also, this is, it is an option for uh, smaller guns like uh, the uh, XDS or M&P Compact, something like that. So I love X300 Ultras. Um, They're solid. I like the manipulation of them. I like the outputs. I like the throw. Um, the uh, XC1 is a much more uh, flood. This is has more throw, meaning you can illuminate things uh, at further distances. It's more of a focused beam. Uh, and that's why I use them on my ARs. They're just they're too big for me to use on my uh, pistols, though a lot and a lot of people do. Um, so nothing wrong with that. If you can pack this uh, IWB, more power to you. But uh, a little too big for my liking. And let me take this off here and I'll put it on some pistols and you can see uh, the size comparison of those. So here is an X300 Ultra mounted on a Glock 19. Uh, as you can see, it extends super far, takes two CR123s, so it's quite wide. Uh, I am using it with the shield that helps uh, for accidental <laughs> discharges of the light. So it kind of covers it from any side activation and makes sure that you can only activate it from the front or from the rear. Uh, so that is an X300. You can tell giant compared to the X, uh, XC1, uh, heavier, but you get a lot more lumens, a lot more throw. Um, so that's the other option uh, by Surefire that's out right now. Uh, and it's a great light, but it is just, it's a beast of a light for a pistol, for me, um, for IWB. For OWB, no problem, but for IWB, just a little bit too long for me. The other pretty popular option is your Streamlight uh, TLR1. This is a TLR1 uh, S, so it has strobe. Um, and they also have an HL version and a standard version. I don't know, they have 100 versions of this light. So it's kind of, it's not quite as big as the X300 Ultra, but still it's a pretty big light. Uh, two cr 123s so it's fat, um, extends out past the thing. I love the manipulations of stream lights though. Um, they're honestly probably my favorite, uh, and that's another reason I like the XC1 so much. The manipulations on it are much like the stream light. So stream light uh, for right-handed shooters on your uh, support hand side is just down for momentary. Uh, and that that's natural for me. Not pushing in, not pushing forward, just pushing down right here is very natural. So I love the manipulations on the stream lights. Um, and good news for those that like the manipulations on the stream lights, the XC1 uh, is very similar. X300 Ultra is forward press. So you press forward on the paddles for momentary activation. You can't press down on them, you can't press in on them, you just have to press forward on them. Uh, and that's okay, but it's not my favorite, honestly. Uh, or you press down for constant on. Uh, and that's nice, because that's constant on is easy to access, so if you're having to do stuff with one hand, um, both the stream light, stream light constant on is pushing down uh, on your right hand finger side or pushing up on your left thumb side uh, or right hand thumb side. Um, stream light, you push down or up on either, or sorry, Surefire X300 Ultra, you push down or up uh, on either side and that's constant on. In forces, constant on. Uh, momentary is just push it in on the paddle and constant on is just real quick. Um, and honestly, I hate, uh, I hate in-force light activation. Pushing in with the thumb just is not, uh, is not natural to me. So pushing in like this, that's not what I want to do. Uh, and I've taken some low light courses where I've been pushing in and I really get up here on the thumb and it just destroys my thumb. Uh, and I don't have weak hands or anything, but it's just my natural tendency is to push this top edge uh, and that starts destroying my, my thumbnail uh, and it's just no good. So I don't like pushing in. It works and it's intuitive for a lot of people, but for, for me personally, uh, I don't like it. I prefer pushing down. Um, so the enforces don't have the down option. But fortunately, this review is for the uh, XC1. So we'll talk about controls now on the XC1. So once this guy's mounted on here, um, 
which is just, like I said earlier, just a simple flathead screwdriver. Um, just screw that on here. And then it's on. Activating this is just pushing down on this toggle here. Uh, and it is perfect. My grip lines up perfect on here. Pushing down on that, it's just, it's natural, it's intuitive, uh, it's light, it's easy to activate. You can do it a million times and it's not gonna destroy your thumb. Uh, so these controls, they seem a little wimpy to me, um, but there will be some people that are going to be, be using this way harder than I am, <laughs> and we'll find out how, how well they hold up. Uh, I'm sure it'll be fine because I'm sure they've uh, taken us through all sorts of crazy tests being surefire. So these controls are pretty small, but they're positioned perfectly in my opinion. Um, so controls on them, again, uh, if you're going one-handed, you can do momentary here. Uh, one-handed constant activation, that's a tough one. Uh, I don't know that it can be done uh, one-handed, honestly. Uh, if you're left-handed, you could. You could get over here, but if you're right-handed, there's nothing you can do. Um, so constant on, you're gonna need your support hand if you're a right-handed shooter to press that with your thumb uh, off with your finger on this side. Uh, and you just push that right through. So if you're looking for a light that has easy constant on activation, honestly, the XT1 is not gonna be for you but for momentary, as most people are gonna be using it, uh, great, perfect controls. Now, as far as changing the battery out, you can use the coin, uh, uh, a casing, or a flathead screwdriver just to unscrew this guy up here in the front. Uh, it's got an O-ring. I'm not sure about the waterproofing of it, but I'm sure it's uh, waterproof. I can look on the box here in a second. Um, so yeah, you unscrew that. And like I said earlier, single AAA. It comes with this Energizer Lithium. Uh, these are sold in stores. Uh, lithiums are good though because they have uh, better operating temperature ranges uh, and they last longer. Uh, shows you how to put in the battery here. And yeah, simple, super lightweight. Lithiums are also lighter weight than alkaline, so they got that going for them. Um, now I'm gonna do some beam comparisons uh, so you can see the flood uh, the beam pattern, uh, as well as the temperature of the light here. This is the XC1. Enforce APL. XC1. X300 Ultra. XC1. TLR1. Or TLR. XC1. Viridian. C5L.